students welcome to the program the topic chosen for today's program is symptoms of maladjustment the objectives set for the lecture are to know about the various symptoms of maladjustment to understand how to identify a maladjusted student in classroom to know about the prevention of maladjustment dear students adjustment is a positive capacity to adapt to one's circumstances and needs this presupposes three things a sensitive appreciation of reality some accommodation to environmental pressures continuing efforts at modifying the environment to suit one's needs according to psychological dictionary adjustment is the variation and change in behavior that are necessary to satisfy needs and meet demands so that one can establish a harmonious relationship with the environment if one fails to make these variations and changes the needs will not be satisfied the demands will not be met thus he or she will not be able to establish a harmonious relationship with the environment resulting in maladjustment or disharmony with one's environment maladjustment can occur as a reaction to stressful situations there are so many factors that are responsible for maladjustment which includes factors related to home family school peers teacher teaching learning situations some major symptoms of this maladjustment include depression anxiety or behavioral problems mostly affecting children and adolescents in addition some other symptoms manifest in the society as indications of maladjustment prevalent there these are alcoholism suicide crime use of drugs job failure frustration etc louis kaplan in his book education and mental health classifies behavioral symptoms that reflect a deviation from normal patterns of response and adjustment as reality distortions mental aberrations affect distortions motor reactions personality disorganization and lastly somatic reactions many of these symptoms may be seen in normal people but frequent occurrence of a number of these symptoms indicate that the person is mentally ill or maladjusted students let us understand these symptoms in detail one by one first the reality distortions man's contact with reality is established through his perceptions if these perceptions are faulty then his behavior will be unrealistic and distorted maladjusted people will have a variety of distorted perceptions because they unconsciously attempt to restructure their environment so that they can make some kind of purposeful responses to it illusions and hallucinations are two forms of perceptual distortions that seriously affect an individual's interpretation of reality first illusion as per psychology a perception as of visual stimuli that represent what is perceived in a way different from the way it is in reality is termed illusion illusions are sensations that are either misinterpreted by that individual or formed by him into inaccurate perceptions an illusion is a distortion of the senses revealing how the brain normally organizes and interprets sensory stimulation though illusions distort reality 
they are generally shared by most people. Illusions may occur with any of the human senses, but visual illusion or optical illusions are the most well known and understood. The emphasis on visual illusion occur because vision often dominates the other senses. For example, individuals watching a ventriloquist will perceive the voices coming from the dummy since they are able to see the dummy mouth. Then hallucination. Hallucination can be defined as a perception with the quality of a sensory perception, but not derived from the stimulation of a sense organ. In psychopathology or psychological sense, seeing or hearing something which is not there is termed as hallucination. These are disorders of perception that are not founded on sensory experience but are created within the individual. He sees, hears or feels things that no one else can sense because no external stimuli are present. Typically a maladjusted person assumes falsely that the origin of the perception lies in the external world. Then mental aberrations or disorders of thinking. A disturbed person is likely to display a variety of defective patterns of thinking and disorders of consciousness and memory. Defective thinking may take the form of a flight of ideas where ideas pour out in great profusion but without logical order. Delusion, paranoid ideas and obsessions are some forms of disordered thinking. First, delusion. Delusions are false or improbable beliefs having no relation to experience or reason. In psychiatry, maintaining fixed false belief even when confronted with facts, usually as a result of mental illness, is termed as delusion. Delusion in psychology means a rigid system of beliefs with which a person is preoccupied and to which the person firmly holds despite the logical absurdity of the beliefs and a lack of supporting evidence. Delusions are symptomatic of such mental disorders as paranoia, schizophrenia and major depression and of such physiological conditions as senile psychosis and delirium. They vary in intensity, extent and coherence and may represent pathological exaggeration of normal tendencies to rationalization, wishful thinking and like. Among the most common are delusions of persecution. Others include delusions of bodily functioning, guilt, love and control. Some delusions appear to arise through an unreasonable extrapolation from evidence such as I know the security services are spying on me because a stranger looked at me in the street. Such instances at first sight suggest that the essential issue in delusional thinking is a faulty process of logical deduction. Then paranoid ideas. The word paranoia comes from the Greek which means next to the mind. Delusion of persecution may become organized into paranoid ideas. The paranoid person is extremely sensitive humorless and rigid. He thinks no one likes him and that everyone is out to does him harm. He may not wait until this harm actually occurs but may try to prevent it through physical, verbal or legal actions. The diagnosis of paranoia when announced to the patient may result in denial of any defective psychiatric care. It is rarely reported as such to the patient during follow-up. Then last, obsession. Psychiatry defines it as a persistent idea 
or impulse that continually forces its way into consciousness, often associated with anxiety and mental illness. It's a condition in which an individual is disconcertingly haunted by one single subject or thought. It so crowds his mind that all other things are pushed out and it disturbs him even in dreams. At times, in order to overcome this obsession, one may resort to some compulsive forms of behavior. Then third is effect distortion. Feelings and emotions are effective aspects of our behavior. Among the many affective disorders that may occur among maladjusted people are depression, phobias, exaltation, and transient range. Each is an uncontrollable form of reaction producing significant alteration of behavior. First, depression. Psychologically, a condition of general emotional dejection and withdrawal or sadness greater and more prolonged than that warranted by any objective reason is termed as depression. It's a disorder of emotion that may serve the needs of individual by enabling him to manipulate others through forcing them to be concerned over him. Depressed people can feel sad anxious, empty, hopeless, worried, helpless, worthless, guilty, irritable, hurt or restless. They may lose interest in activities that once were pleasurable experiences like loss of appetite or overeating, have problems in concentrating, remembering details or making uh, decisions and may attempt or commit suicide. Life events and changes that may precipitate depressed moods include childbirth, menopause, financial difficulties, job problems, a medical diagnosis, for example, cancer, HIV, etc., bullying, loss of a loved one, natural disasters social isolation, relationship troubles, separation, and catastrophic injury. Then, phobias. The word phobia comes from the Greek word phobos, meaning fear. A phobia, when used in the context of clinical psychology, is a type of anxiety disorder usually defined as a persistent fear of an object or situation. In psychiatry, an abnormal, intense and irrational fear of a given situation, organism or object is termed as phobia. The term phobia is encompassing and usually discussed in terms of specific phobia and social phobias. A specific phobia is a marked and persistent fear of an object or situation which brings about an excessive or unreasonable fear when in the presence of or anticipating a specific object. In children, phobias involving animals, natural environment like darkness and blood injection injury usually develop between the age of seven and nine years. And these are reflections of normal development. Some of the specific phobias include acrophobia, fear of heights, aerophobia, fear of drafts, air swallowing, or airborne noxious substances, aeroacrophobia, fear of open high places. The specific phobias may also include concerns with losing control, panicking, and fainting, which is the direct result of an encounter with the phobia. Unlike specific phobias, social phobias include fear of public situations 
and scrutiny which leads to embarrassment or humiliation in the diagnostic criteria. People with social phobias have extreme feeling of self-consciousness built in powerful fear. About 20% of adolescents diagnosed with a social phobia also suffer from depression and use alcohol or other substances. Then exaltation. Exaltation is an accelerated effusive response to stimuli that are either not observable to other people or would have little effect on a normal person. The exalted individual is overstimulated, hyperactive and often talks endlessly and loudly. Then transient range. It means an exaggeration of the temper tantrum seen among children. This uncontrollable temper reaction in adults result in strong emotional upheaval that can lead to destructive actions. Number fourth, obsessive compulsive reactions or motor reactions. Compulsive acts are a form of motor behavior indicating that a person is having difficulty maintaining control over his actions. Compulsions are irresistible impulses to perform certain acts that in some way relieve anxiety. Often they are associated with obsession, hence the term obsessive compulsive reactions. Then personality disorganization. Society everywhere demands from its members conformity to its folkways and mores, to its values and standards. But often the individual fails to meet the requirements of the society in which he lives. As a result, he develops personality problems and becomes disorganized. Such a person is considered mentally unfit in case of mental abnormality. He remains socially isolated because in his case there is breakdown of communicative understanding. Personality disorganization therefore means that individual is out of adjustment with society who has failed to organize the chief goals of his life into an integrated whole so as to achieve unity of self. Personality disorganization may take the milder or serious forms of mental disorder. In addition to mentally disorganized persons, there are other examples of personality disorganization in the alcoholics, criminals, gamblers and drug addicts who are mentally normal but socially abnormal. Then neglecting one's own self. Some disturbed people undergo a depersonalization process in which their sense of a self is undermined. They think of themselves as worthless and hopelessly inadequate and present a picture of gross self-neglect. Then dissociative identity disorder or multiple personality disorder. Dissociative identity disorder previously known as multiple personality disorder is thought to be an effect of severe trauma during early childhood, usually extreme, repetitive, physical, sexual or emotional abuse. Personality disorganization is a separation of roles to the point where individual is a different person at different times. Few people undergo such complete personality reversals as in fiction. But every disturbed person passes through phases when he or she feels that one aspect of his or her personality becomes dominant for a while. Most of us have experienced mild dissociation, which is like daydreaming or getting lost in the moment while working on a project. However, dissociative identity disorder is a severe form of dissociation 
a mental process which produces a lack of connection in a person's thoughts, memories, feelings, actions or sense of identity. Then somatic reactions. The term somatization describes a tendency to experience and communicate psychological distress in the form of physical symptoms. Somatic symptoms often occur in reaction to stressful situation and are not considered abnormal if they occur occasionally. Some individuals however experience continuing somatic symptoms, attribute them to physical illness in spite of absence of medical findings and seek medical care for them. Disturbances of body functions usually accompany any of the said symptoms including impairment of appetite, high blood pressure, migraine, headaches, persistent diarrhea, gastrointestinal pains and upsets, heartburns, ulcers and others. Now dear students, let us understand how to identify a maladjusted student in a classroom. The already discussed symptoms of maladjustment need proper investigation to get the affected individual identified. But there are some behaviors in maladjusted students that can help in identifying them superficially in classrooms. They include number one, maladjusted child is often nervous. Nervousness is exhibited by habitual biting and wetting of lips, nail biting, stammering, blushing, turning pale, constant restlessness, body rocking, nervous finger movement or frequent urination. Number two, the maladjusted child shows undue anxiety, over mistakes, marked distress, over failures, absent-mindedness or daydreaming. Number third, the child suffers from complexes and he is unusually self-conscious or overcritical of others, either too docile or too suggestive. Number four, the child who cannot adjust himself in the school environments tend to tease, push and show or other pupil. Number five, the maladjusted child has behavior disorders which are generally seen in his antisocial behavior. He is cruel to others, bullies them, shows undue interest in sex, tells offensive stories, dislikes school work, resents authorities, reacts badly to discipline, runs away from the class and shows complete lack of interest in school work suddenly. He has psychosomatic disturbances also. For example, he begins to vomit or develops constipation and diarrhea. Now dear students, prevention of maladjustment. Prevention of maladjustment has been described under the categories of primary, secondary and tertiary prevention. Number first, primary prevention. It is concerned with biological, social and psychological factors that induce stress in the human organism and the ways in which these stresses can be modified or reduced. It includes proper care and concern in prenatal, infancy, schooling stage and strengthening home atmosphere and economic conditions. Schools provide children with social and intellectual experiences which they can get nowhere else and which have a powerful formative influence on personality. To focus attention on children who are most vulnerable to emotional stress, a conceptual model of personality development called crisis model has been suggested. Now, Secondary prevention. This involves the early detection and treatment of behavioral disorders that can't be prevented, but may be deferred from becoming more serious. 
secondary prevention is an essential supplement to primary prevention. It depends first upon discovering maladjustment before an individual behavior has deteriorated too seriously. Through the efforts of various official and volunteer agencies, campaigns of public education are being conducted to acquaint people with the nature and symptoms of mental illness so that they will seek treatment when it is needed. Television, radio, newspapers, popular magazines and other channels of communication have been used extensively to make the public aware of mental disorder as a treatable illness and to combat the superstitions with which these ailments have been viewed. Then tertiary prevention. Tertiary prevention is more properly called therapy, which is the modern treatment of maladjustment so that the people uh, do not become chronically disabled. The major forms of treatment used in the rehabilitation of maladjusted person may be classified into two broad categories, somatic therapy and psychological therapy. Number first, somatic therapy is the treatment of emotional disorders by physical methods such as drugs, shock or surgery which are meant to modify physiological processes. Then number two, psychological therapy is aimed at strengthening the individual's mental emotional resources so that he can function more effectively. The simplest form of psychological therapy is counseling, where the problems are worked out on an operational level without attempting to alter the psychodynamic functions of the individual. Psychotherapy goes beyond solving of current problems and tries to restore the individual's functional capacities. Inside therapists, do this through attempting to rebuild personality structure, whereas behavioral therapists seek to alter a person's reactions and habits so that he experiences less emotional stress. The somatic therapy, particularly drugs and shock treatment, are used usually in conjunction with psychological therapy in the treatment of seriously disturbed patients. Dear students, we conclude, despite the variety of treatments available to treat the mentioned symptoms of maladjustment, personality is not easily changed and the process of readjustment is lengthy and expensive. This has led many people to seek quick cures through the advice offered by various media of public communication. There has also been considerable quackery practiced by untrained people who use suggestions and persuasion to affect temporary relief of symptoms. The hazard of such pseudotherapy is that it may cause a person to delay getting proper treatment for his real problems. Dear students, I hope you have understood this and enjoyed the program. Thanks for watching.